Common mistakes in data modeling is the topic of today. Hi, I'm Juha from Ellie, and we're going to be talking about the problems that you will face with conceptual models and logical models and some ways to overcome those. So the first problem and the biggest problem that you're going to be having with conceptual data models. And now you have to remember that the conceptual data models need to be about the business, about the reality behind the business, right? So the first problem you're going to have with conceptual modeling is that you are not choosing the correct entities. Choosing the wrong entities is the single biggest reason for failure in conceptual data models that we've seen. And the, the uh, big idea behind this whole thing is that we need to be able to choose the things that we have data about. Not the systems, not the tables, not the reports, not the processes. Uh, we have to choose things that are like customers and invoices, events, objects, places, things that are, and this is a good rule of thumb, things that are countable. So whenever you're thinking about your data product or, or your uh, system or whatever you are modeling, you try to find the entities that exist behind all that technical data. Now, choosing these is super important. And another thing that you have to remember besides countability is what we call the category versus instance problem. Now, the category versus instance problem is a little bit more involved than we are going to be covering today here, but uh, think about an entity like car. Uh, the, the question here is, is it a single car, like the, the actual object, the physical car that you have going on the road, or is it a type of car, meaning, you know, Mazda MX-5 or Miata, as it's known in America. So this is the category versus instance problem, and this is also something very vital when you are choosing your entities that you understand what you actually mean by that. Now that gets us to our second point, which is that you have to be able to define your terms. What is the thing that you're actually describing there? Think about a train, for example. If, if you have an entity called train, what does that mean to you? It could be the single physical train that is rolling around along the tracks there, but it could also be a train service between two cities, which is being served by multiple actual trains. So you have to understand that even words that might seem obvious to you or the people at present at a modeling session might completely change its meaning when you are moving across domain borders in terms of uh, trains, for example, from, from uh, ticket services to, to logistics and, and uh, scheduling and so on. So you always need to add definitions for any of the entities that you are using in a conceptual data model. Two of the most difficult entities usually, and, and these happen to be also the entities that we encounter most often, are customer and product. So what is a customer? What is a product? You have to be able to define that. A good way of thinking about uh, these definitions is to consider an, uh, an answer to the question, what do you mean by this thing? This gives you practically the business glossary as you're doing your modeling. The third point that we have here is that you need to be aware of your scope. Don't try to eat the whole elephant at once, as they say. Uh, if you are trying to model the whole world at the same time, top down as a single huge model, you will get lost in details and uh, basically lose the big picture, lose the idea of, of what these things actually are about. Individual models can be smaller in scope and that's perfectly fine, but you need to think about the entities that they share between them and thus kind of link these models via these common entities. You can also have a few high-level models that cover larger areas of your business, but these must then have only the few core entities that are super important to you, like customers and products, for example, to be able to cover, cover the uh, wider area. Fourth point is a lack of collaboration with business. This is a big problem. You can't do data modeling at the conceptual level, which is honestly where you should be starting this whole thing. You can't do that as a technical exercise by a bunch of the data architects sitting in their ivory towers, you know, talking as a, as a data architect myself. You have to keep an eye on the real business, the real value, the real people involved in that business. And that's super important. 
So it's about collaboration, it's about communication, it's about understanding and sharing that understanding of the actual business behind that data and behind that technical uh, solution. Let's now move to logical models. A logical model is of course a more detailed diagram involving the uh, implementation design of a specific data solution or data product. If we think about logical models, you have kind of already got the understanding of the overall structure of the world as it is from the conceptual models that you've done. For logical models, you are moving now in more into details, more into technical implementation. Still, there is a risk that you are going too technical too soon. The biggest problem with logical modeling is that you are skipping entirely the conceptual modeling phase. So instead of trying to jump directly into the details, you have to use the understanding of the conceptual layer, the, the reality of the business to your advantage. So try to maintain understanding of what is what. Link your conceptual things with your logical tables and, and entities in the logical model, whatever they are, dimensions or facts or whatever. So try to keep track of what do you mean by a single row of this logical entity. Another big problem with logical modeling is that uh, at this level we start to get into discussion of methodologies. And there are competing and, and perhaps complementary methodologies, uh, but the idea of a methodology like Data Vault, for example, is that, that you have certain building blocks that you're supposed to use and you're building your logical model out of those. This could also be the case of, with, with dimensional models or, or practically anything. Um, the thing here is that if you choose a specific methodology for logical modeling like Data Vault, you have to know what the, tr what the rules are. If you are using the building blocks without understanding the underlying rules, you will be creating something that doesn't really work. So each of the methods that you can use have its own quirks and the uh, conceptual model should kind of guide you towards a structure that reflects the realities of the business by using those building blocks from the methodology in a way that they are supposed to be used. So for dimensional models, you have to figure out that your facts are, you know, countable events or things like that. And your dimensions are uh, things from the real world, like, like uh, customers and countries and so on. But you can't go wild with those and kind of lose track of both the business reality and the, uh, the requirements of the methodology. Other than that, logical modeling is perhaps slightly easier, perhaps less involved in the sense that you have freedoms to, to go deeper, you have uh, certain freedoms of, of coming up with your own designs that are specific for the use case rather than trying to model the entire actual world. These are the most common mistakes we see with conceptual and logical modeling. Hopefully this helps you. Try to keep this in mind as you go forward and check our other videos for more content. See you next time.